Today's video is brought to you by Mr. Cool, America's number one choice for quality, affordable DIY HVAC equipment. And Filter By, offering quality HVAC filters shipped right to your door. In today's video, we're gonna show you how to silver solder your refrigerant pipes. And I wanna clear up some of the misconceptions involved with using Stay Bright 8. This is a product made by Harris and it's not a regular plumbing soft solder for water. This is specifically engineered for refrigeration pipes. The tensile strength of this is 10,000 PSI. It's gone through a bunch of different tests and proven that if it's done right, this can hold up just as good as brazing, if not better. What happens when you braze is you're getting this pipe so hot, 1300 degrees before you can melt that um, brazing rod and it actually softens the copper to where if that joint gets bent in the future, it's actually weaker. Whereas this only gets up to about 400 degrees and that's one of the huge advantages is that any homeowner can buy this. It's super easy, you can get this at Home Depot, nothing special and it's super compact. You don't have to lug oxyacetylene tanks. Now the other huge advantage is that we don't have to run nitrogen through this. Now the reason they run nitrogen through these when they're brazing is that it creates like a soot inside of the lines and that can get clogged into the TXV and things like that. With using Stay Bright 8, you don't have to because it only gets up to 400 degrees and it does not build that um, sulfur stuff inside of the lines. Now, the disadvantage that people will say is you have to use flux. Now, this is an acidic thing. So the main thing with this is just making sure that we're not super liberal with the amount that we use. We're just gonna be um, cautious in how much of this we put on. Now, if we don't put on a ton of this, not much is going to get inside of this pipe. And I have done this method for years and years. I've seen people that have done this for 30 plus years, never had an issue with this um, flux in the system. Um, if it does do anything, it's gonna be years and years and years down the road when it's past life expectancy anyway. And like I said, I haven't had any issues with it. Now, something that's critical in doing this is cleaning your pipes. So you'll notice how clean this is here. We just used a Scotch-Brite pad like this one. Just clean it up real nice. Make sure you get all edges. Something I've run into is if you have a really oxidized pipe that's been outside for years and years, you might not be able to get the bottom side. So you might have to use like a really rough sandpaper to get that oxidization off but you want to make sure that everything looks good at least an inch up past you know where your fitting is a uh, half inch past your fitting um, so just go a little bit extra there now something else that is really helpful is using one of these to clean the inside of your pipe which is also critical now they make these in different sizes and you just run it back and forth and this gets it really nice and clean and kind of preps that pipe. You of course wanna make sure you get any debris or anything that you get inside of the pipes. Um, but with anything new like this, you generally don't really have to use this. Um, but if you're trying to re-solder something that maybe you didn't get a good seal, you can heat it up and then clean it out with this and it does a really nice job. So I'll make sure and leave these linked in the video description. This is seven eighths, three quarter and three eighths. Those are the most common um, sizes that are gonna be used. So we're just gonna clean our pipes. We're gonna remove this and uh, put our flux on. We'll show you how to do that and then we can get to soldering. Okay, so we're just gonna kind of, this is a brand new container. So we're gonna wipe this excess flux off, get it off of our brush. And then again, we're just gonna be cautious about how much of this we're putting on. And I usually don't go all the way to the edge. I leave a little bit of gap there so that it doesn't force any inside of the pipe. Okay, so that one's golden. Got that one in. And something else that's very critical here is you don't wanna have any gaps. So sometimes what I'll do is take a pair of pliers and just make sure this is squeezed all the way around the joint. Um, if you have gaps, this solder will just kind of run out of it. That's one disadvantage to um, Stay Bright 8. But as long as you have a nice fit like this, then you're golden. And if you do have a gap, I'll show you how you can eliminate that. So we're just going to take this chair, a pair of channel locks, and we're just going to go around and kind of squeeze it. You don't have to squeeze it too hard. 
should be good there. All right, let's move on to this one. We'll get it cleaned up and fluxed. Okay, so everything's nice and clean here. Just gonna put our initial layer on and then we're going to scrape some off here. That's about what you want there. And there we go. We are now ready to solder. I like to go ahead and just take off any excess here. And that's it. Now, uh, one other thing we're gonna do, and this is kind of optional, um, we're gonna put some wet rags over this just to make sure that this doesn't get overheated. I have soldered this and you're in and out so fast that you can just cool this off after. But let's go ahead, all I have right now is paper towels. So I'm just gonna get them wet, put them here, and that will keep it cold enough that we're not gonna damage these king valves. All right, so we've got our wet um, rag there. Now we're just gonna apply heat on the bottom here and then we're going to apply this solder on the opposite side and we're just gonna work our flame around and you'll notice how quickly this solder will slide into this joint. Okay, now I'm gonna hit the top. that solder is going to follow wherever that heat is. Okay, now we can cool it off. And that's how low heat this is. I can hold my hand right here, no problem on the king valve after we just soldered this. Now we'll just do a visual inspection all the way around. Everything is perfect. So we can move on to our high side. High side is super fast and easy. And I'm just gonna take my torch and point it away from this rubber here. Make sure that that solder goes in every part of the joint. So easy. Love it. All right, we just have two more joints here and then we'll be working on our inside joints. Get our mirror out, do a visual inspection. All right, let's do a little check here. Beautiful. Good coverage all the way around. That looks great. All right, guys, it's easy as that. Everything is finished up out here. We're just gonna get this insulated and we'll go on the inside and get the inside portion done. But this gives you a great idea of how to use Stay Bright 8, how easy it is. You don't have to get the temperature up super high and you only need a few items to, um, to get this job done. I feel like any DIYer should be able to do this. A lot of people are hesitant when it comes to the, um, the refrigeration pipes, but using fittings can be a real lifesaver. You don't have to do a lot of bending 
and just make sure you get ACR fittings from like supplyhouse.com or Amazon sells them. Just make sure they're ACR rated. They're a little bit thicker gauge than plumbing fittings. One thing you'll probably notice is there's no filter dryer. That's because Goodman actually has the filter dryers built in on all of their condensers. So you'll notice that there's no filter dryer there in case any of you guys were wondering. But anyways, I hope this gives you a good idea on how to use Staybrite 8, how easy it is, how much it can save you if you're trying to tackle this job yourself. With that, I want to mention our website, DIYHVAC.org. You can find frequently asked questions when it comes to replacing your system. Um, a lot of questions that I get about that. You can find remote support if you want to get support on replacing your system, saving thousands of dollars. You can find a sizing guide there, and you can also find out where to get good quality equipment and tools that you'll need for this job. Until next time, you guys be safe. Happy HVACing, y'all.